Happy Easter. He is risen. He is truly risen. We've heard this fact. He's risen from the dead. That his death wasn't the end of the story. We come to Mass when we're permitted to by law every Sunday to be reminded of that fact. Where are we going? Clopas and that other disciple heard about the resurrection and they headed out of town. They headed to a place that we're not even sure of the actual existence of. Emmaus. There are a few places that claim Emmausness in the Holy Land. I guess it would be good for business. But we're not sure where they were going. They heard about the resurrection and they left. They weren't sent. This is the stands in front of the resurrection that a spirit-infused church receives being sent to share what was met, they left. You might be feeling right now, I understand their pain. The thing I want to do most is get out of my stinking house. You know, I want to, I don't care where I go, I want out. I want out. That desire to leave the place of confusion is real in our hearts. It's real in my heart. And it's important to note that the response of our Lord when we leave, when we start to go away from where His resurrection is proclaimed, He doesn't condemn us. He joins us. He joins us. He joined those fellas. If it was two guys, it may have been a a married couple. We don't know who that other disciple is. He joins them on the way. Away. Understanding that their hearts were troubled. And He invites them to share their hearts with Him. In that simple way of, tell me about what's going on. And so they shared it. The Lord is interested in the drama of our hearts. It may be good, it may be bad, it may be in the middle. But writing it down maybe in a journal or talking out loud with Him even in prayer an opportunity to get out what we were hoping for, what we really wanted. We wanted a Messiah who would conquer so we could be more public winners of the existential lottery. He walks with them, but then He speaks to them. So we share as he's walking along, stopping to invite him along with us, not even knowing he's there for sure. We now, having shared our hearts, need to be open to his story. Which is that through the suffering, salvation occurs. The resurrection culminates after a necessary suffering of the Messiah. And we who are baptized into His very name have that same vocation. Which is frustrating. We want to win every game. We want to win the Super Bowl every year. We want to 
achieve everything at work. We want to achieve everything in our homes. We want to be the best. But it's through our suffering that the Lord speaks most loudly. It's through the failure, the frustration that He shows us His face if we let Him into it. How much anxiety is out there in these days? You know the specific worries you have. You may be worried for your family. You may be worried for your community. You may be worried for our nation. You're worried for the world. Whatever that concern is, the Lord is interested in showing His face through that. He wants to go into that wound. He wants to bring His wound of resurrection to that wound in dialogue. And where does He lead that couple of fellows? He leads them to the Mass. Right? They invite Him to stay with them and then He takes blesses, breaks, and gives him, gives them bread. And then he disappears. It's in the Mass that the Lord shows us Himself. Gives us strength to confidently witness the resurrection in our life. To not Keep going in the wrong way, but go back to Jerusalem. Go back to where the rest of the disciples are and acknowledge that something has happened in our hearts and in our lives that makes us capable. That makes me capable of living and not escaping through a myriad of ways that we have at our disposal. Not running away but staying, remaining open to where He's going to send us. This is the power of our faith. This is, in a way, the, the frustration of our incapacity to be here at Sunday Mass right now. Because it is in the Mass that Jesus comes to us so that we might be transformed, our wounds might be turned into places where He shows us His more life. Hopefully in these days, we are people who, like those two disciples, are experiencing, as we do encounter Him in various places, Signs that He hasn't abandoned us. Burning hearts. He wants us to, to almost be bursting with desire for Him. Reunion with Him. Being fed by Him. So that on the day that these restrictions end and we come back to this place of power, we're able to recognize more deeply and truly than we did before that this is the font of our life. New life in a world of death and darkness and fear and anger and bitterness and ultimately empty hopes. I was hoping for a running back in the second round. Dashed. I hope he doesn't play well for the, for the Ravens. Anyway, <laughs> out there whether trivial or severe, our hopes are inadequate for our hearts if we aren't hoping for everything and ultimately resurrected life. Let's beg today as we encounter this powerful story of Jesus joining them on the journey that we might let Him join ours. So that every Sunday, we might rejoice and not walk away. <laughs>